Yeah, this is uh, Bang Bang Ray Hill. Please like and subscribe. Years ago in the 80s, uh, I was in uh, Brixton Prison. Um, they put me in with a guy called Keith Barry. That's Parky and Johnny Barry's brother. I think his name was Keith. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, just, I mean, I didn't know who the Barry's were. The Barry's was quite heavy. They got, um, they took over from the craze. Uh, I don't know too much about it. I mean, I've been told stories, but I uh, don't believe what I've been what I've been told. But it's you know taken from there. But Parking Johnny Barry was uh, nicked with the craze, I believe, yeah. And uh, Keith Barry, uh, the brother, I don't really know too much about it, even though that I was chewed up with him. But um, but Keith, you know, drove me mad uh, because when I went in the cell, uh, he'd be reading books all night long. I like to do my bird, you know, I like to get my bird done and get it done as quick as possible. On my mind, I just want to get my nut down and just sleep it over, yeah, not be up all night talking. But I couldn't even talk to this guy because all he wanted to do all night long was read a book. And uh, and I could, all night long, the light's on, I couldn't sleep. I have to have the light out here to sleep, but I couldn't sleep. And in the end, it started to drive me mad. I didn't want to have a go at him, you know, I mean, it was a, just got there, I didn't really know who he was too much, you know, I didn't know too much about it. But he got to the stage after about four days that I don't know enough, yeah. And uh, one day I walked out of the cell and I I was going across the bridge yeah, to the other side. And there was this guy on the bridge having a row with uh, two guys. One guy was a light skinned guy and a white guy. And they was having a go at him. And uh, no, I sort of intervened. I said, What's up, mate? You're right. And these guys said, what's the mind your own business? I went, crack. I hit one on the jaw, knocked him straight down. The other one, I come over the way and bang, hit him on the jaw, he went down. And uh, then this guy said to me, quick, mate, quick, come. And I walked into his cell, he said, what's your name? I said, I'm Israel, mate. He went, look, where are you, where, where are you now? Whereabouts? I said, a lot of over there. He said, I'm with a guy called, 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 called Keith Barry. He went, yeah, I was with him a bit of time, drove me mad, Ray. Kept reading the book all night long, but pain in the butt, mate. He went, why don't you come in my cell? I went, really? He went, yeah, 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 mate, come in my cell. Go, we mate, run through the screw in the box. Come over. So I went over the box with this geezer. He said, look, oh, look, you know, put Ray over in my cell with me. So I got all my gear out of, out of that cell, mate. I was so relieved. And I walked in with this geezer. This geezer was named Mickey. Mickey Gooch, yeah? This geezer... Good looking guy, blonde hair, uh, in a blocky black, blacky blonde hair. This geezer was the nicest guy you could ever meet, yeah. Went in the cell and he had a television in there, yeah. I got a television? Where's he getting that from? Do you know what I mean? Tell us one about in them days in the seventy in late seventy nines, early eighties, you know, television run about then. He had a little little television in there, I thought, fucking hell, where'd you get that from, mate? He went, yeah, with a screw in here, got a place in Spain. In Magaluf, yeah. He said, and I let the uh, the screw grow there for a couple of weeks. And he's, I told him to get me something. He brought me in, brought me in uh, the telly. He said, What do you need? Do you need anything? I said, Yeah, look, I've got nothing really. Got bits and pieces, mate. He said, Listen, leave it to me. He came over with all sorts of shampoo, toothpaste, aftershave. He was getting his, his food, he was getting in like proper food in there, you know what I mean? And I couldn't believe it. this guy, Mickey Gooch, mate, was the business, yeah? Proper nice guy. And I was with him for what? I don't know, quite a bit of time in his cell, you know, and uh, got to really, really like him. And no one would give us any grief. I mean, I was, I was a good amateur pro, a good amateur training as a pro as well, yeah? So I, did, I knew how to fight. Uh, Mickey loved me, mate. He loved me. I was a big lump as well, quite big. And he said, listen, he said, give me your name and address. Give me your name and all that, your address and where you live. He said, when I when I get released, he said, what's that? What's happening with you? I said, well, me, I'm like a bit of trouble at the minute, mate. It looks like I'm going to get a big bit of bird. You know what I mean? A big bit, yeah. I said, I've been on a, over the other side, in in the cut A side of it, yeah. He said, but they, they transferred me over here. He said, and I said, look like I'm in a little bit of trouble. You know what I mean, mate? He went, what you looking at? I said, I don't really know yet, mate. I, I'm looking at a big bit of bird. He went, look. When you get out, I'll try and get hold of you. Give me just even your mum's address, phone number, and all this. I'll try and get hold of you. I have a meet. Anyway, done me a big bit, a bit of bird, and 
I mean, it's a big stories. It goes, I mean, big, big stories, you know, because it's in my book, yeah? The book's going to come out maybe June, July, somewhere around about August sometime, you know? And anyway, so uh, I've done my bit of bird. Mickey's done his bit of bird. And it's like, I forgot all about it. I, for, I forgot all about Mickey, you know? You meet a lot of people in prison, don't you? A lot of people saying this, saying that. Do you take a lot of notice? No, you don't, you know what I mean? Anyway, whilst I was in prison, I got to have lots of other people's names and addresses and all this. So, you know, you get your little book. You, they give you a little diary book, you know, about four of them, all different names and addresses and all this sort of thing anyway. So, um, I'm in Lucky's. I get a job in Lucky's uh, club. I'm fighting there quite a lot in Lucky's. I'm, I'm always fighting. And one day this woman came up to me and said, your name Vail? I went, yeah, yes, I is. What's up? She said, listen, I've got a bit of paper here. Um, is you know, but given a bit of paper, it was a Mickey Gooch, and it said, "Listen, um, hello, Ray, it's Mickey. Uh, listen, mate, uh, I'd love to see you have a chat with you. Come down to Bootleggers, yeah? Bootleggers was Bootleggers. Oh, was it a club? Is it anyway, anyway, the bird said, yeah, we're going to go down. You want to come? I went, yeah, 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 yeah. Goes down to Bootleggers. I just go down the stairs. There's these white settees there. You have all these birds sitting on it. I mean, they're really pretty girls. You know, and I thought, well, I can't know. So. Goes over to the bar, and uh, straight away, I recognised him, man. There he was with his jacket on, but pulled up sleeves to his elbows, yeah? Blonde there, good-looking guy, proper clothes. I mean, really expensive clothes. All I had on was a suit on because I'm working on the door. He went, hello, mate, how you going? I went, all right, Mickey, that's things, mate. He said, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, I've come down because you want to see me. He said, listen, have a little bit of a drink with me, sit down, have a good chat. He said, and uh, I'm going to give you my address. He said, you know, look, I'll be here till late. If you want to stay, stay. So I stayed, yeah. And uh, got, I got, got, got hold of myself, a girl from the, from, from the couch. They're all prostitutes on the couch, yeah. So Mickey paid for this girl. I was all happy, you know what I mean? So I had a good night, yeah. Anyway, that's, uh, so I, and then eventually I goes home and, uh, Mickey gives me his address, and his address is by Snaresbrook Crown Court. Uh, so I got up to Snaresbrook Station, and, and I went to Mickey's, walked to Mickey's uh, from there, and uh, walked knocked at the door, and this beautiful woman answered the door, Kathy, Kathy Gooch, and, uh, and she had a little baby called Danny then, a little baby called Danny, a little very, very young child, yeah? And uh, she cut, went, went in the house. The house was stunning, mate. Stunning, honestly, so beautiful. She, I mean, she, come on, Mickey. Mickey was so lucky to get Kathy, mate. She was such a good housewife, so pretty, you know what I mean? Beautiful woman. And the house was stunning, stunning, mate. I went in there and I was just sat in there. Mickey coming, oh, mate, all right, mate, cuddles and all that. And um, he said, Look, you know, um, start working with me if you want to start working with me, right? I went, yeah, mate, I want some of that, Mickey. You know, Mickey sort of like talked to me and took me down to the gym. And uh, we was going down, this, I think the gym was the Leighton Stone, Leighton, something like that. I went down to the gym and they had a big boxing ring in his gym, yeah. And uh, started sparring around with people, knocking them. I was knocking them around the place, I swear. I was knocking people all around the gaff in that ring, yeah. And uh, got on the weights and I was pumping big, big weights, big dumbbells. I mean, I used to have... Um, listen, you say this and you say that, people don't believe you, so I won't say too much, but they're big dumbbells, yeah? Massive dumbbells, benching, big, big, big dumbbells, inclining, silly weights with big dumbbells, declining, even more silly weights with big dumbbells, yeah? And uh, Mickey went, oh, I can't believe it, what you're finding about. And these guys, these guys couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? I was on the voice as well. I was big, mate, massive. So, and then Mickey, I had no money. I was skint, yeah? I had no money. Um, I said to Mick, you know, can you get some money? He went, listen, Ray, let me tell you something, right? One thing, yeah, that I don't do, I don't lend money out, I don't give money out, yeah? I don't do that, way. I know, I, I've never give, I don't give money out, mate. It's not, I'm not here for, it's not a charity organisation. This is business, yeah? You want to earn money, you're going to earn it, yeah? And you've got to earn it. So, um, I was with Mickey a long, long time. He gave me 50 quid. He gave me 50 quid. I got a train and I used to come over to his house every, all the time. 
And then one day uh, it took me down the city and different clubs and this, that and the other, and I started uh, doing a bit of work. I mean, some people were getting leery, uh, had to oblige them big time, yeah? And that's oblige people, knocking them out and really fighting. You know, anybody, everybody want to fight, I was there for it, you know? I didn't go monkeys. And uh, Mickey would say to me, look, do you want to earn some good money? I said, yeah, yeah. He went, let me say his thing, but he said, um, is this guy here yeah, causing a little bit of trouble for us, yeah? And um, we want it sorted. And I went, yeah, well, no problem. So anyway, I said, look, do you want it? You're going definitely going to do it. He said, yeah, 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 no, no, I'm up for it, mate. He went, okay. He said, the guy's took a fucking liberty, took a right liberty with us, right? He's, he, and, 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 you know, I'm wanting you to go and see him, have a chat to him, and, uh, you know, tell him straight, he's got to pay what he's got to pay. I went, okay. Anyway, this is in two series. This, I can't do it in one series. It's quite big, yeah? I went, okay, mate, I'll do that for you, mate, no problem. Anyway, so a couple of days, three days, uh, oh, Mickey gave me the guy's address. I got out of my pal, pal of mine, said, listen, uh, do you want a few, Bob? Uh, can you drive me around to see this guy's house, yeah? So I was driving around, went to this guy's house, and uh, see this guy had his car outside his house. I went up and done all the tyres, done every tyre on his car. You know, for that, you know, sort of way out. And I thought, I'll go back in the, in, in the morning, wait for this guy to come out, do his tyres, and I'll slip in and do him. What happened? Go there in the morning, all the tyres are up in his car. I, mean, oh, fuck, I can't believe it. I can't believe it, that, that he must have come out, seen that, and got any of someone that quick to do his tyres. So I thought, fuck, you know, I'm going to be too pleased, you know what I mean? So anyway, waited about, waited about, waited about, waited about. This guy owed money, yeah? This guy owed some money, he had to pay it. So anyway, I'm miles away, this is like miles. This is in the middle of the sticks, yeah? So I'm going down the high street, one of these high streets, going down, and uh, all of a sudden I see the guy pull up in his motor car. I can't believe it. I thought, hold up. It's the geezer, it's the guy. He jumps out of his car with his little girl, walks across the road to a shop, I jumped out of the car, picked up this big baseball bat with a big lump of leather in it, and uh, waited for him, yeah? And when he come out, when he come out and got his, his, got his car, man, I smashed him to pieces with it. I smashed him to pieces with this lump of wood, mate. Battered him. I battered him, mate. I don't know uh, whatever happened to this guy, but I battered him bad, yeah? I just sold a few pennies, you know what I mean? And I battered him. But it was a long way away. Um, I can't remember where it was, I think it was like Isha, Isha way, that way, Ask Isha, is it Isha, yeah Isha, that way, Isha, over that way, yeah, quite a long way away really, and uh, anyway, sort of the guy, done what I had to do, and uh, come, I mean I've done him bad, I've done him really, really bad, yeah, and I went behind the car, I went behind my mate's car, I said go, 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 one behind his car, because, because so like something stupid, he's driving his own car with his own number plate, yeah. So I'm running behind the car so they can't see the plate, yeah. I'm running, keep running, and he's driving away and got back. Anyhow, eventually got in the car, drove off, got home with with, with a guy, give the guy some bit of money for thanks very much for what he did for me. I had a bit of money, make you give me some money. Thanks very much. Bump. So all of a sudden the phone goes, it's Mickey. See you, do a short favour, don't ever come anywhere near me, mate. Stay well away from me, boy. I went, well, what have I done? He said, do a short favour, just stay well away from me. I should do something, and you couldn't even do that, yeah? See you, just stay well away. I said, it's done. He went, listen, stay well away. But what it was, the guy had a twin brother. The guy, the twin brother, they seen the twin brother and think, no, I ain't done what I've got to do. But I've done what I've got to do, you know what I mean? Anyway, so, fucking two days, three days go by, the phone goes again, I'm gay, really, because of Mickey, I love Mickey, you know, my pal. The phone goes, he's went, oi. I went, what? He went, it's me, Mick. Oh, no, no, it is, what's up? He went, come and see me. I went, don't like about me, what's up? He said, come and see me. 
So he goes and sees him and he said, kiss a kiss, give me a cuddle. He said, yeah, I have some money for you. He went, no, there's some money for you. Come with me, get in the car. Got in the car, he had a Carrera, Carrera Sports. Drove me down the road to these Jewish people in Leytonstone, yeah? Not late, yeah, Leytonstone, yeah? And uh, they had a big car front in there. So he said, any car you want here, yeah, it's yours. I went, shut up. He went, it's yours. He went, it's yours. He said, you're a good boy. He said, any car you want, it's yours. So really? He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's this uh, Rover, yeah? This road of, Rover Van, <clears throat> Van and Plus, yeah? Black it was, with white leather interior in it. I went, that'll do. <clears throat> I'll have that. So Mickey went to the guy, he said, listen, bump, they can have that cash. Bosh. Gave me the cash for it. Got in the car, drove off, yeah? Drove to Mickey's house in Chigwell. Yeah, he lived in a big private road, yeah? He had this house, mate. It was massive then. This is then. He had this massive, beautiful house, big swimming pool in the back garden. He'd moved from, he'd moved from, uh, from, what's it called it? From, um, oh, this, I'm sorry, mate. Anyway, moved from, that, from, from, from where he was, yeah? And, uh, and then he bought a place in Chigwell. Beautiful place, mate. Big swimming pool there. Massive big house, yeah, I mean, really massive. Six bedroom house, massive front room. He had all these big uh, Chinese pots in there, vases, sauces, big Chinese sauces. He had all Chinese stuff. Pitch, oh, um, unbelievable, mate. Cost a fortune, yeah. But I had bought that stuff off him like, later, later on. So anyway, Mick said to me, you know, come back to the house with the car. I'll go back there. I had no petrol, yeah. So I got a petrol station. I felt so good getting out of the car, filling this car with petrol. It was like, it was a dream, you know what I mean? And then he said, wait, come and see me tomorrow. Mm. I'll drive the car home. I felt good, you know what I mean? You just feel on top of the world, yeah? Got to drive the car home. I thought, yes, mate, yes. And like, and I put the put a speaker in there to the phone and all that and the other. And it's just out of this world. I've never, you know, I didn't have no money. I was skint. All of a sudden, I got money, got a car, got my own flat. I'm over the moon. Mickey got me a place in Sunny, Sutherland, Sun, Sutherland's Avenue, Sunderland's Avenue in Paddington. Uh, but it's a beautiful place, yeah. But it's funny, it's been happening. They, um, I went down uh, Edgeware Road uh, on about, what, half past one in the morning? Walking down there, I to go, go and get myself some food at the at the shop. Yeah, walked in the shop and uh, went walking around buying bits and pieces. And I noticed this girl. Yeah, she was absolutely stunning. Yeah, but she had tattoos all over her face. Who would have tattoos over the face? But she had tattoos all over her face, and she was stunning. So I said, to she, I was walking by. She said, "Excuse me." I said, "Yes." She said, "You ain't got a, a, a fag for me, have you?" I went, yeah, go on, what do you want? I bought some face. So I bought a 20 face. She said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just going a bit of shopping going home. Do you, want to, do you want to do a bit of business? I thought, what sort of business? She said, well, do you want a bit of business, uh, like sex? I went, yeah, of course. Anyway, I took her back to her place, and she said she wanted something like under 20 quid, something like that. I went, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give her the money. Stayed the night. I had a really nice flat. But it was a bed set, yeah? But... The bed seat was in the ceiling. You had a big, like, you had the staircase goes up to the ceiling. It was out of this world, right? Honestly, the kitchen was an unbelievable kitchen. The bathroom was, oh, and they had these big Bannum locks on the door. No one could get through the door. It's, um, it's stunning, yeah? And I, I mean, I loved it. I think Mickey was paying silly money for it. Anyway, uh, this girl stayed the night. Good night, mate. Had a good time. But in the morning, she was sick. She said, look, I'm really, really sick, but I don't feel too well. And I know what sick meant. She, she needed some heroin, yeah, some brown. So I got in the car, drove off, and I went to go and get some. I locked the door and everything. I locked the door, and uh, I went down to this place. And I, I knew what they was doing it. Went down and bought a couple of bags. And on the way back, I stopped in uh, in the place and got some milk and bits some other bits and pieces to take back to the house, yeah? As I got back to the house, I noticed my front, I noticed my front window was open, yeah? And I uh, went for the Bannams to get in the flat, walked in the flat, and everything had gone. 
The only thing that weren't gone was the set E there, yeah? And the fridge and all that right in the kitchen. But the television, the music thing had gone, my money, a lot of my money had gone, this had gone, that had gone, it had all gone. And what she'd done, <laughs> she'd got her pimp, right? And it all went through the front window. Everything went through the front with clever girl, mate. And from that day, I swear to God, I was looking every day for her, yeah? I never bumped into her once, yeah? I wouldn't have done nothing really, can we? It's just like one of the things. But I jumped at the time because my money went, you know, like all my television went, my DVD went. You know, it was that JVZ DVD, the big DVDs in, yeah? Uh, not that, yeah, and, and I went mad. You know, mad, but what can I do? It's happened, isn't it? And then um, I phoned Mickey up to old Mickey back, said, you silly fucker. He went, come, come over, see me. So he took me shopping. He bought me a new telly. Uh, a new video, DVDs and all this, that and the other. So I was well pleased, you know what I mean? But anyway, this is Bang Bang Whale. Please like and subscribe. It goes on for quite a bit, quite a bit of story, but uh, I don't want to spoil you all now, yeah? All right, take care. And please press the like button and subscribe. Yeah, bye-bye.